So ready. Good evening. This is Imro with I roll with the Venets, and I have Miss Caroline Karbowski here with me. Hello. Uh, Thanks for having me on. All right. Everyone got their cameras on? Yes. Camera for me. Me too. All right. Do you see me? Yes. Okay, awesome. So, today we're going to be talking about the event that happened recently. Can you go into detail about that? Sure. So, last week, Emmy and I were at... And what was the date of that? Oh, what was... May 21st, I believe. Of 23, yes. Yes. So, tell me yes. about May 21st, 2023. It was STEM to you with the National Federation of the Blind of Ohio at COSI, which is Columbus's Science Museum. Okay. And we were the second event to happen nationwide. They're happening, these STEM to you events are happening all across the US this summer. And so there might be an event that other people can go to that might be closer to home for them. All right. Can you give me a summary of the location and why it was chosen? Yes, so we picked COSI because COSI is actually one of the main organizers of this event. They have STEM activity lunch boxes. They are cardboard boxes with different STEM activities. I'll show one. The box says Kits COSI Connects. And this box was space themed and had five activities. And they're actually coming out with a kit that is about the James Webb Space, space Telescope. And it was designed from the start to be accessible to blind and low vision users. So this space themed kit though that we did, it originally wasn't designed for blind users, but then they worked with NFB to make it accessible. And as part of a grant, they got representatives from multiple states to go to the NFB headquarters in Baltimore, Maryland to try out the accessible aspects of the kit and bring those activities to their home state to host a STEM to you event with blind students in target grades three through 12. So we, I'm, so me and my co-collaborator Laura worked together to host the Ohio event, which Emmy and Emmy's sister, as well as some other attendees, were there to experience it. Okay. How many attendees did you manage to acquire? So we had Emmy and Emmy's sister, as well as two other students who were blind or low vision. And I'm thinking for volunteer, we had two, Laura as well, and another college age volunteer. And I think we had two sighted volunteers and two blind volunteers that were adults who came, as well as a representative from COSI. That is wonderful. I am so happy to hear that all of this went to down. So, can we talk a little bit more about the event itself? Yes, so this was an all day event. We did, there were a possible to do five activities but the, due to time, we got to do three, and some students, we had the students vote on which ones they wanted to do. So we started out with- True NFB, by the way. Exactly, you know, anytime working with students, you know, it, it will take a while. And honestly, when we did the training in Baltimore with- I mean, about the voting, know, but yes. That Oh, that's true, true, that is true with NFB. We always vote on things. So we did one activity where we made a rocket. So the, the thematic, of, the theme of this event is we launch to the moon, we go to the moon, do experiments, and then we come back home. So for launching to the moon, we made a balloon that was a taped to a straw and a string was threaded to the, through the straw. And then students either held uh, either ends of the string or taped them or tied it to a chair. Blew up or the did balloon. whatever. 
Right, or whatever. Let blew up the balloon and let go to see if it would move across the string. And some taped different payloads to the balloon, such as rocks, to see if their balloon was powerful enough to actually carry things like how a rocket would carry things to the moon. So Emmy and I did that one together. Um, then we did a second activity where we made also another type of rocket using an Alka-Seltzer tablet and water. So, and we put those Alka-Seltzer tablet in the water in a film canister. That's a small cylinder with a cap, filled it with different amounts of water and different sized tablets. And the gas would build up and then make the cap pop off and it, the cap and the canister would fly in the air. So we were outside. All right. All right. And, yeah. And, and we have uh, some, yeah, we have some clips of that. We're going to roll them right now. Maybe. Oh! So students got to experiment with different amounts of water or size of the Alka-Seltzer tablet to figure out which combination would make the rocket go highest in the air. And we found that out by counting the number of seconds from launching the rocket and hearing it pop to hearing the canister hit the ground. And then students used their canes to find the canister on the ground to reuse it for another experiment. We then had pizza from COSI and then built our moon bases using toothpicks with Play-Doh to build 3D structures such as pyramids or cubes. And students then drew their structures or structure that they wanted to build using the Sensational Blackboard Tactile Drawing Pad. And I'm going to show that here. It is a 8.5 by 11 rectangle. The back is smooth. The front is rubbery and you put printer or computer paper on top, the eight and a half by 11 inches size, and then draw with a ballpoint pen directly on the paper. And you put the paper on that rubbery side so the paper kind of gets crinkly when the pen tip is pushed on top. So then you can see the line and feel it. So it's great for allowing blind and sighted people to share their ideas. So one thing students started doing is one student would draw, once it would build a structure with the toothpicks and Play-Doh, someone else would draw the structure, and then a third person would feel the drawing and try and guess what the first person made. And it, we decided to do this activity because it emphasizes understanding 2D and 3D structures and how to represent them in different ways. So this was really fun. And the other two activities we didn't get to do was one was making craters by dropping rocks or other objects into brown sugar and feeling how big the crater is. And the fifth activity is making a parachute. And then so that way we could come back to Earth from our moon launch. But students got to do those activities at home. Some things that made this event unique compared to if you just bought this COSI kit is NFB provided some accessible content materials. Each student got a floppy binder with both the braille directions and it had the large print directions. So I'm showing here both the braille version and we also had our large print booklet. Students also got the standard print booklet and we also had an accessible electronic version that some students used with voiceover. We also had tactile graphics made. This first one shows a balloon being, uh, the balloon that is attached to a straw on a string. There's a picture of a balloon with arrows showing how air fills it up and then comes out when you let go of the tip of the balloon. There's a graphic of putting a tablet inside the canister and flipping it over a drawing of the carbon dioxide molecule, and then two graphics showing what a parachute looks like and how it works. So fantastic. Yes. This is all great material. And NFB, if you are watching this, you guys do great work. And we look forward to seeing what you come up with next. 
Yes. And there's still four more STEM to you events that you can sign up for in both Alabama, Arizona, Michigan, and Utah. So if you live in Alabama, Michigan, Utah, and Arizona, and Arizona, go and get the slots done. while they're still open. And this is a free event too. And you don't have to be from those days. You just have to get yourself to that state. Exactly. So even if you need to hitch a ride, hitch a ride because these events are not worth missing. So my blind viewers, Michigan, Arizona, Utah, Alabama, we're calling out for you. Yep. And Caroline, do you have anything else to say? Um, I think this is that's pretty good. I think the we have some exciting things this summer and next year we can talk about. That we're yeah. Going to talk about. Um, but first, why don't you talk about the last thing that happened? The oh, little surprise at the yeah, end. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so we so since we did this at COSI, being a science museum, we got to do a little bonus activity, and our COSI rep brought out liquid nitrogen and did roll some it. appreciate about this is COSI really did make this experience accessible. So there's in parts of this where the rep encouraged participants to really participate. So we stomped our feet to make the dirt to help the cloud appear and then also when we had objects that she put in liquid nitrogen to demo how the molecules were getting closer together when they were cold. She had us flail our arms around like being a a warm molecule and then bring our arms back in close to show that we were a cold molecule and not really able to move and very compact. And that was a really uh, good activity for blind students to use. Like, instead of having to like look at pictures, they could just experience it in their bodies themselves. So that was- Role play is fun and kids like it, so. Right. And then they even had this cool thing where she had like the liquid nitrogen in a flask with a stopper and some it somehow would spray out either liquid nitrogen, it was like the the condensation from the liquid nitrogen would spurt out. I really didn't understand it too much, but all I know is that it felt kind of cold and then when you touch the spot where you felt it, it wasn't wet. Even when it would spray on paper, the paper wasn't wet. So Yeah, it felt like it weird. was raining inside, but it wasn't. Right, right. So that was so really strange. Cool. And then she put, it was like a rubbery ball, like a little cross ball or so in liquid nitrogen. And then... Roll it!
broken in about 20 pieces. Aww. So I think we did. Hey, can you do like Humpty Dumpty put it back together again? <laughs> 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 and broke it into pieces and everyone got to feel their piece and it was really hard. And then as it got warmer, it would get rubbery again. So that was a really fun bonus to have, something you may not really get if you're not at a science museum with liquid nitrogen. And it was, again, that one thing I think was really impactful too is like the first thing I described is she did making a cloud. So, basically pouring liquid nitrogen on the ground and then the condensation is very like uh like steam i guess you could say everywhere with the dirt and so you can really feel that coldness of the cloud and sometimes it can like the concept of clouds is can be like a difficult thing to describe since they're in the air you can't really go up and touch the cloud when you're up in the sky it's too high to get up there and even like sighted people have a hard time really understanding what clouds are. And so being able to make a cloud right here on the ground that students could feel and experience, I think really helped dispel some misconceptions of what students might think clouds might be. Yeah, and I think it was really impactful for me. Um, uh, one thing, if you watch or my channel a lot, you know that my moniker, uh, one of my monikers online is Pretty Stim Kitty, uh, big, weather and weather alert fan um so that was very impactful um caroline do you want to do you want to continue yes so emmy and i are working on a collaboration this summer into next school year with my nonprofit. um big reveal time <laughs> can i get a drum roll please what is it Come on, Carol. Oh, I was drum rolling. Can you hear it? I'm quiet. Yeah. Okay. And we now are collaborating. <laughs> yeah. Go into some detail. So at C3D, we make learning guides. So C3D is my nonprofit. We 3D print models for blind and low vision people across the world. And our website will be in the description. Yes, it's it's S E E the number three D dot org. And with models, people can request to have a description come with it to provide some context for what they're touching. And mm -hmm. some we make kits. We make yes. kits too. So some of these most popular descriptions have then become kits. So these like themed model kits. Usually there's about five and they come with step-by-step -step descriptions and context about what the model is. So Emmy is interested in coming out with a weather themed kit and writing descriptions for that. So you might be hearing more about clouds and tornadoes and things like that. And hopefully we'll be able to 3D print some models showing the shapes of these objects. And we can even provide suggestions for how to make like your own clouds at home that maybe you can feel are more realistic to touch compared to like a plastic one. But the plastic models can show you a generic shape that one mm -hmm. or and like. um yeah we're looking for different stages too so depending on how old you or your child are uh, you can order different i guess different kits right or different learning guides to go with the kits maybe some that are more targeted for younger kids some targeted for adults mm -hmm. or older children mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, you may be hearing from her or myself more in the future. I cannot wait to start season two onto the chase uh, on uh, with the chases and uh, well, more about season two in just a few videos. Sounds like fun. And thanks, Emmy, for having me on your channel today. No, thank you for being a great organizer and hosting this event. There will be more photo comps and videos coming soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye.